Stay all day. Stay all day. Tuned in to the best of the best. This is the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve is yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. This is the go-getter energy that moves you to make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. Putting all this together, you get the mindset, the method, the podcast known as work on your game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day. Welcome to the show. Today's topic is how to respond when your confidence is challenged. You're in a situation where you play a sport and you had a bad game or any type of performance art and you had a not so good performance and you know that everybody saw it because they were sitting right there watching it you tried something that has worked for you many times before there's another way your confidence could be challenged and it just didn't work this time it's worked every other time but you tried it this time and it just didn't work and you're like uh, i don't have any other technique so this technique better work something that you've depended on for a while is no longer available to you or for whatever reason is no longer converting no longer producing the result the way that it was in the past you think that you're at a certain level of performance these are all just different examples that i'm giving you here you think you're at a certain level of performance but someone whose opinion you respect just told you that you're not as good as you thought you were maybe they told you that you're not good at all maybe they told you you were completely trash how do you respond internally this is not how you respond externally, like what you say to somebody or how you need to walk when you walk into a room or none of that stuff. This is about how you respond internally when your confidence is challenged by your estimation. You're feeling like the confidence that you've had for these things that you can do because we know that confidence is what? Is a demonstrated belief. It's a belief in your ability to do something. When you feel that that belief in whatever ability has been challenged for whatever reason, maybe because you got... You didn't get an outcome that you thought you would be getting, an outcome that you are used to getting, you've expected to get. For some reason, it just didn't happen this time. Someone told you that the outcomes that you've been getting aren't even as impressive as you thought they were. So your confidence has been challenged. And again, this is just, this is a, a state of mind here. All right, your confidence being challenged is a state of mind from within. This is not about what somebody else says. Because somebody could say something that is attempting to challenge your confidence, but if you don't give any credence to what they say, you don't respect their word, you don't respect their opinion, then your confidence won't feel challenged. But when you actually feel that your confidence is challenged either by something that was said, something that you did, or something that was not said, or something that did not happen, how do you respond to that internally? That's the question that we're going to answer in today's episode. So let's get straight to it. And actually, before I do that, any of you who haven't heard my other episodes when I speak on this topic of confidence, please go to dreallday.com slash podcast where I've gone deep on this subject. I would refer you, first of all, to episode number 25, one of the all-time most listened to episodes of this podcast, which is called How to 25X Your Confidence Right Now Today. I've also given two TED Talks centered on the subject of confidence, one from TEDx Coconut Grove it's in Miami, Florida, How to Be Confident When You're Not, and the other one is TEDx LV in Las Vegas. Too much confidence is not your problems. If you haven't heard those, then you need to act, definitely go look up those TED Talks if you prefer watching videos. And since you're already listening to a podcast, make sure you go to the archive at dreallday.com slash podcast and listen to whatever topics fulfill your heart's desire, especially the ones where I've talked about confidence. And also in the game group membership, I have a section on personal growth, personal development, where confidence, I mean, we dive deep into it strategically, not just me giving you a bunch of tips and hacks on confidence because you can get that anywhere including this podcast but going into it strategically that again is in the game group membership which you can read about learn about and join at dreallday.com slash memberships so now let's get into point number one the topic again is how to respond when your confidence is challenged number one thing you can do is answer back that's the first thing is to answer back to the challenge of your confidence. And again, we're not talking about externally. I'm not talking about somebody says, hey, you're a bum at basketball. And then you go argue back with them. That's not what I mean when I say answer back. Just because your confidence has been challenged doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you. See, a challenge, ladies and gentlemen, we got to understand what a challenge is. A challenge is simply a question. So when your confidence is being challenged, your confidence is being questioned. And you're questioning it internally. You're questioning your own confidence. So answer the question. Show that challenger, whatever that or whomever that challenge may be. It could be a person externally, but it could be yourself. It could be you challenging yourself. It could be your conscious mind challenging your subconscious. Show the challenger why you are who you are and how you got to where you're at when your confidence is being challenged. See, that challenger could be another person. It could be a situation that's challenging you. 
It could be your sports team is playing a game on the road and your team is getting beat by 20 points at halftime. That's a challenge to the confidence of your team. Who's going to answer the bell? Who's going to answer the call? It could be your business is in dire straits right now. You don't know how you're going to make payroll in 10 days. That's a challenge to your business. The challenge to the confidence that you had in the business that you're running. Are you going to answer that bell? Will you answer that call? So it could be a situation that's challenging you. We all are familiar with a person challenging us. And maybe whether they say something, they question us, or maybe they don't do something, or they don't say something, or they don't take the action that we expected them to take if they believed in us, which, showing, which is showing us maybe by omission that they don't believe in us. It could be you challenging yourself just because of some things that are happening in your own mind. And you start questioning, hey, am I really as good as I thought I was? Am I really capable of achieving this outcome? Am I really worthy of this position that I'm working for, this position that's been bestowed upon me? When you get challenged by a person, place, thing, or by your own mind, the number one, uh, number one response that is your responsibility, and you see, see how that works? Responsibility is the ability to respond. That's the only way you can have power is to have responsibility. The more responsibility you have, the more power you have the potential of accumulating. You must respond by answering the question. Conf challenge is just a question. Answer the question when it's being asked. You let that question linger in the air for long enough, it becomes a, it becomes a, a monkey on your back. And the longer you take to answer that question, the more your conscious and subconscious mind start to believe that maybe you don't have an answer for that question. So maybe the question is a really good one, which means maybe you don't have that confidence since you haven't answered the question. So answer back the first thing you need to do. How do you answer back though? How do you answer back to a challenge of your confidence? How do you answer back to a question about your confidence? I'm gonna tell you how. Let's move right on to point number two. Today's topic is how to respond when your confidence is challenged by a person, place, thing, or by yourself. And what if that challenge has you questioning yourself. And this is just what I talked about in the first point. That challenge often is us questioning ourselves. Because even if somebody says something to us, as I said, if we decide we're not gonna listen to that person, we decide we're not gonna give any, we're not gonna pay much attention to anything that individual person says, then it doesn't really matter that they said anything. Or it doesn't really matter that they had an opinion. It doesn't really matter that they made a comment or that they asked the question or they attempted ridicule because we're not really listening to them. But if there's somebody whose opinion we do wanna hear, we do wanna listen to for whatever reason, then we gotta take it in ourselves. I heard Jack Canfield, who's the one of the co-authors of the Chicken Soup for the Soul series of books. He said, when other people give their opinion to you about you, it's like Velcro. Everyone knows how Velcro works, right? You need two pieces of Velcro for Velcro to actually perform its job. If you only got one half of the Velcro, with Velcro, you got the, the soft part, right? The little felt part. And then you got the part, the, the grippy part, the harder plastic part that actually grips onto the felt. If you only have one of those, then there's no point in having it by itself, right? Velcro doesn't work with only one piece. You need both pieces together to make Velcro work. So the Velcro in your mind is the hard plastic part that grips onto whatever that grips onto the felt part. And the felt part is the things that come from the outside. See, if somebody throws something at you from the outside, but you don't have anything in your mind, you don't have that other piece of Velcro to grip onto it and hold onto it, just because you heard it doesn't mean it's gonna make any, have any effect whatsoever on you. Just because someone says something to you, just because you questioned yourself, just because you challenged yourself, doesn't mean it's gonna have any impact or grow any roots in your mind if you don't have both pieces of Velcro. So, when, so the point that I'm making here is when another person or a situation or a thing challenges you, the only way that it grows in your mind is if you have some of that same question already sitting in your mind. You have the seeds of that same challenge already in your mind. That's the only reason it can stick what comes from the outside and it can grow into something. So when that challenge has you questioning yourself, because that's the only thing a challenge can do that's gonna matter to you anyway, is question yourself. Even if somebody else planted the seed, you gotta have some fertile soil in there to grow that seed. What you need to do is reference your list of accomplishments. Reference your achievements. Look, take another look at your resume. If you don't have a resume, if you don't have a list of accomplishments, you don't have a list of achievements, then you need to pause this episode right now and go make one and come back. The material will still be here when you get back. What do I mean by a list of accomplishments? It means exactly what it says, right? Get a, a blank document. I would suggest a digital document. You could do this by paper if you prefer, but the list is gonna get longer and longer. So make sure you got enough paper and enough space. So as you continually add to this list, I mean, think the next 20 years, you're gonna have more accomplishments to add to the list, right? So make sure you have enough space that you can continue to add. You're gonna write down every accomplishment that you've achieved in your life. Everything you've achieved in your life that you're proud of, that you're happy about, that maybe other people wanted to achieve, but not everybody was able to, you need to write those things down to remind yourself of what you've achieved in your life. This 
programs, this conditions, this part of the conditioning process for your conscious mind to remember that you've been successful before. Remember that you have accomplished things before, which conditions your mind to look for more things to accomplish in the future. That's the way it works. Not gonna, it's not an overnight just because you wrote it down, all of a sudden you're gonna be this accomplished person and everything's gonna work. This is a conditioning. That's why you write it down so you can refer back to it over and over and over again. The same way an actor or an actress who's preparing for a big time movie, they don't read the script one time. They look at the script over and over and over again so they can internalize the category, internalize, internalize the, not the category, the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The role that they're playing, internalize the script, internalize the story, internalize the character. That's the word that I'm looking for. And then over time, as they keep looking at it, eventually they start to learn some of the lines. They start to memorize it. They even know what the other person is supposed to say because they, you need to know what the other person says if you're going to act because you need to know what's your cue to say something next, right? So this is the same way that an actor or actress learns their script. They look at it over and over again. You need to look at your script of success. You already got all these successes. This is the script you need to be looking at on a regular basis. So your mind is conditioned to understand that this is the way that it is. This is the way that you work. So if you don't have one, make one now so you have it when you need it. And this list reminds you of what you've done and the potential that you have within you to do it again. Point number three, today's topic is how to respond when your confidence is challenged. You feel like your confidence has been challenged or you know your confidence has been challenged or right now, you are heavily questioning yourself. What do you do in this situation? Number three thing you do is get active. The worst thing you can do when your confidence is shaken is to sit there and bathe in this energy of shaken confidence or challenged confidence or of questioning yourself and allow that internal questioning to begin to open holes in your psyche. Uh, that's the worst thing you can do when you're feeling any level of Anything that's less than 100% fully confident and you're questioning and challenging yourself, don't just sit there and allow the questions to linger or allow the challenges to linger and just sit and man, man, I don't know. I don't have an answer to that question. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. That's the worst possible thing you can do. When you're feeling that stress, that fear, that anxiety, those questioning yourselves, any of these energies, the worst thing you can do is feed these energies by giving it time or attention. All these negative energies, the energies that we don't want in our lives, they grow off of. There's only two foods that they eat. One of them is time and one of them is attention. So if you starve, you starve it of attention by giving yourself something to do and you starve it of time by getting active. Don't just sit there and bask in. Don't, it's like you're sitting in a, a bath, you run a bathtub or a jacuzzi if you're like me and you just sit there in it. I mean, the water's not moving, it's not flowing. You just sit there and just feel that energy forever and never do anything. That's the worst thing you can do. Get active. Confidence is a belief in a demonstrated ability. Demonstrate, ladies and gentlemen, is a verb, also known as an action word. I learned that in elementary school. That means go do something to demonstrate your ability. Confidence is your demonstrated ability. So if you're not doing anything, if you're not taking any action, of course your confidence is not going to build. Of course you're going to be questioning your confidence. Of course your confidence will be shaken. Of course you will have lost all your confidence, as people say sometimes, because you're not doing anything. You're not taking any action. The more action you take, the more opportunity you give yourself, the more you open yourself up to the possibility of building confidence. It is an action word to demonstrate. So do something. If you're losing confidence in your jump shot, for example, basketball players, what do you do? Don't sit in the house and think about the fact that you're losing confidence in your jump shot or email somebody and tell them, man, I'm, I'm concerned that I'm losing confidence in my jump shot. Even though you may be telling the truth, the best thing you could do is go to the basketball court and shoot jump shots. Why? So you can show yourself the demonstrated ability that you can actually make these shots. You're questioning the fact of whether or not you can make them because you're not making them right now. So go make some and the question will be answered. You see how all of these work together? If you're not confident in your ability to write, go write something and publish it and put it out so the public can read it. It doesn't have to be for sale. You can write a blog post, you can write a tweet, you can write an Instagram caption. Anybody can do that, right? Confidence comes from doing, people. It does not come from thinking about it. It does not come from watching. It doesn't come from reading or listening. It doesn't come from waiting. Confidence, real, true confidence comes from your action, from the things that you do. Yes, another person can tell you things. Let's not sit here and talk all day about confidence to you. You won't, and this may inspire you and motivate you. You won't develop any real confidence until you actually do something with the things that you hear me saying. You got to do something with it to have real confidence. Only so much another person can supply to you before you take some steps on your own and develop it through that activity knowledge. Get active and give your mind some concrete examples of your demonstrated ability. Again, you're missing jump shots, go shoot a jump shot. You're questioning your ability to, to run or walk, 
then stand up and run, go outside and run, stand up and walk. These things give your brain the demonstrated ability. Okay, I just demonstrated to myself that I can do it. You don't have to question it anymore. You're giving yourself obvious proof right there in front of you that, that you're capable of doing the thing, whatever that thing happens to be. Again, that your confidence is being challenged. Let's recap today's topic, which is how to respond when your confidence is challenged. If you had a bad game, everybody saw it, you had a subpar performance, or you were less than what you expected to be, or less than what people expected of you, and you know the public knows about it, you tried something that's worked many times before, but it didn't work this time, something that you've depended on is no longer available to you, you think you're at a certain level, but someone whose opinion you trust and respect told you that maybe you're not as good as you thought you were, what do you do in those situations when your confidence is being challenged? Number one thing you do, you have to answer back. You gotta answer the bell. Just because your confidence has been challenged doesn't mean it is, there's anything wrong with you and doesn't mean your confidence has been lost. It's just a question. It's like somebody asking, it's like if you have a car and somebody says, hey, do you have a car? Or they're just questioning it. All you gotta do is answer the question. <laughs> yes, I have a car. No, I don't have a car. Hey, I don't have one, but we can call Uber. No, I don't have one, but we can walk. Whatever the situation is, answer the question. All a challenge is is a question. It does not, it's not a definitive statement. It's not a declarative statement. It's a question. Which is giving you an opportunity, it's putting the ball in your court and giving you a chance to answer. So show the challenger who you are, what you are, how you got to where you are. That challenger could be another person, it could be a situation, it could be an energy, it could be you challenging yourself. And moving on to point number two, what if that challenge has you questioning yourself? And every challenge really is us questioning ourselves because just like Velcro, someone else saying something or challenging us or trying to ridicule us or asking a question about us out in the open, None of those things has to matter to us unless there's something in our mind already ready for that question. It has to be some fertile soil in our mind that is ready to germinate that seed of questioning that came from the outside. If that soil is not there, then it doesn't really matter what another person says because we can immediately dismiss it. But when you find yourself questioning yourself, you need to rest reference your list of accomplishments. If you don't have a list of accomplishments, make one now so you have it when you need it. The reason that you have it is the same way, same reason that an actor or an actress has a script before they do a big movie so that they know their role, they understand the character, they know the cues, they know what comes before their line, they know what comes after their line, they understand the person that they're performing as in this movie and then they go out and perform. They're not looking at the script for the first time when they get into the movie and the director yells action. That's what a lot of people do in life. They get into life, and the first time the director yells action, they're looking around like, I don't know what I'm supposed to say. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. This is why you make these lists, this list of accomplishments ahead of time, the list of goals you want to achieve ahead of time, the list of the type of person you need to become in order to achieve those goals ahead of time. So when the director yells action, you are ready to act. You already know what to do. You already know who you're going to be. You already know the actions that you're going to take. You know what comes before, you know what comes during, and you know what comes after. So if you don't have this script ready, Get the script ready. Point number three, get active. The worst thing you can do when your confidence is shaking is to sit in that energy and let the internal questioning open holes in your psyche. It's like sitting in your own bath water. How long are you gonna sit there? Eventually, you gotta get up out the bathtub, dry off, and go live life. Confidence is a belief and a demonstrated ability. And to demonstrate, ladies and gentlemen, it is an action word, also known as a verb, meaning do something. Not think about something, not watch something, not observe something. All those are actions as well, I understand. But I'm talking about the actual action of moving your feet and actually going and doing something. Getting accomplishment under your belt. If you're losing confidence in your jump shot, for example, go to the gym and shoot jump shots. If you're not confident about your writing, go write something and put it out for the public. Confidence comes from the doing, not from the thinking or the waiting. So get active and give your mind some concrete examples of your demonstrated ability. Now let's talk about what's going on in the gang group and the personal development section as I told you already. We dive deep into confidence in a strategic way. The gang group is all about the strategies. It's not about the hacks or the tips or the, I don't know what other word people want to use for these little quick and dirty things that they give you that you could do this right now. Here's a little 30 second hack. Listen, if that's what you're looking for, the shortcut thing, then listen, you can listen to this podcast and maybe you can get a couple hacks and tips that you can use. You can get those from myriad people online. If you're looking for the strategies to build something long-term, something that is going to take a process, is going to take some effort for you, but you build it long-term and it lasts long-term, it's not a surface thing that just comes and goes. When it comes to the mindset area, I mean, I think I have proven, I've demonstrated my ability when it comes to the mindset side of things. In the game group, the personal development area of the game group, we go deep into this thing called confidence. So if it's been a mystery to you or you want to make sure you're doing it the right way, that's where you get it. Work on your game. DreAllDay.com.